Hey everyone. So for those who've been following Lorcana, as you know that Julia Riva has quickly become a fan favorite artist. We've seen half of the first chapter revealed so far, and we have five cards that Julia Riva's worked on, including fan favorites such as Rafiki, Olaf, The Wardrobe, Genie, and she was one of the artists on Magic Broom. So we are super excited this morning to talk to Julia. Julia, thank you so much for joining us. Hi, thank you so much for having me. We're so excited to have you. Um, we're huge, huge fans and, and really excited for you to get to meet the rest of the Lorcana family and fan base over the coming months as the game is released. So with that, in the very near future, we're about a month out from release at this point, thousands of people around the world are gonna be opening packs of Lorcana cards and experiencing your art for the very first time. How would you introduce yourself to your new fans? Well, um... Hi, I'm Julia, I guess. Um, I, I'm gonna say I'm the person that likes drawing, but I guess everyone you've interviewed kind of has that trait. I am. Uh, I work in animation. I don't really know how to describe my role because I've done a bit of everything, but mostly backgrounds or visual development. And I'm just like so flattered and honored and grateful to be joining Lorcana. So I'm really very excited. Yeah, we're we're excited too. Um, <laughs> having seen your work now, uh, yeah. So this is your first time in the in the card game space. You're an animator traditionally. Um, when did you decide to pursue art uh, as a career and, and make it a make this passion your uh, your life's work? Gosh, I don't know if I have a moment. I've always known that I wanted to draw. That's what I've been doing since I can remember. But I I'm from Italy. Um, and I don't think there, at the time, I, I didn't think there was that much of a choice of careers in art. I don't know, I, I guess I just drew a lot and I remember at some point watching up the Pixar movie, mm -hmm. uh, which is of course CGI, like I didn't think that any of that was drawings. Uh, but during the um, final credits, uh, there's like tiny pins and like all the memorabilia that Russell, the character, collects during the movie. Uh, and I thought, someone must be designing those things. Uh, <laughs> that means, I guess someone drew it at some point. Is that a job? Like, is it something I can do? Uh, and I started looking into it and, and got obsessed with animation colleges. So that was really it. Uh, I, I looked into studying where I could study. I ended up going to uh, London. I studied in London. That's really it. But once I got into animation, it was kind of like uh, I got sucked in and I couldn't leave. I just really love it. I have to say, <clears throat> I saw Klaus um, the year it came out and it quickly became a Christmas staple for me. Um, Liam can attest I am all about the Christmas movies at, at the holidays and Klaus is one of my now favorites um and when we when i saw that you worked on that project i was so excited to get to meet you um can you tell us about that experience working on the film and what were some of the elements that you worked on um it, it was amazing uh it was actually one of my first animation jobs it wasn't the very first one but almost mm -hmm. uh and it definitely was the biggest thing i think i've done up until to this day so i am not a very much christmas movies person so at first <laughs> i was i thought it was going to be like oh just another of those movies that i don't really care for and then i i saw the animatic and i was like okay this makes sense i really want to be part of this uh it was great we i was working in spain because it was produced in spain um i was doing cleanup at the time so like cleaning up the final line the one you see on screen and Klaus in particular was a, like a, a bit of a different technique than the usual animation. It was traditionally hand-drawn, but like the render on top is strange. Um, so it was great. Like I got a taste of what the animation industry can be and I really loved it. And I think my favorite part were the people because I think it's the best industry to meet people in. Mm -hmm. uh, some of those people I still carry with me today are like my closest friends. So I don't know, it was a blast and I really, I'm, I'm so happy the world loved it as much as we did because there was passion inside that project. Yeah, it's it's amazing. I mean that they they saw your you know your work and brought you on to the project because I mean the the art style I feel aligns really really well with kind of what 
you do, um, just general, like your passion projects and all of that sort of stuff, the art style of that film aligns so well with with your work. Um, so you can absolutely see why why they wanted you to work on the project. It's yeah, it's such a lovely film. I just adore it. Thank yeah, you. that's true. Um, for those not familiar with Klaus, I think you can watch it on Netflix. Um, yeah. It's a delightful film for any time of the year. Uh, don't wait till Christmas. Go watch it. <laughs> you know what Aaron said about your your style uh, and and being perfect fit for the film is I think is is spot on. Not only the the style itself, but then you know you're you're pretty prolific on um, social media and post a lot of sketches there. Um, for anybody who hasn't you know gone to your profiles and taken a look, and um, your work uh, is. Um, the, the artist it reminds me the most of in terms of like the approachability and the heartwarmingness is is Nicholas Cole, honestly, out of the artists oh, that we've wow. worked with. Just because your characters all have this this whimsy, this playfulness, this approachability, um, and these uh, soft edges in terms of their personalities. Um, and so it's it's really delightful. Yeah. So the other thing with your with your work, um, a lot of it is inspired by, you know, nature, the natural world, plants, animals. You see your characters in like a natural setting. Um, is that something that you're that you're consciously doing or what is it about nature that you find so uh, inspiring? I don't know how much of it is conscious and how much of it is unconscious. I first of all, my God, I wish my work looked like Nicholas Cole. Thank you so much. That's the biggest compliment. I don't know. I think I'm just drawn to nature. I grew up pretty up close with nature. Uh, I, I come from a place very near Italian Alps and my mom made sure that I was very often on top of mountains in our free time. Um, I'm a plant mom, a very big plant mom. <laughs> I don't know. I think I just appreciate how much, like how many shapes and colors and like it looks like everything in nature is designed, but you kind of overlook it most of the times. So I really love to go in it and see it. And I don't know, I wish I could just draw like a big cityscape, but I have to put some ivy crawling somewhere or it's, I'm weak. <laughs> <laughs> we think it's delightful. <laughs> Well, something really interesting when you were talking about the the nature, how um, everything is is very well designed, but we um, overlook it most times. Uh, I think is what you said, and uh, I love that phrase because it it evokes you know people just moving about their day, walking down the road and passing by a thousand little um, scenes or objects or moments that they're just oblivious to. Um, so for for you, I'm wondering, um, do you do you take time to specifically like? seek out those those moments or look for design elements in nature that people may be missing or do you just see them around you as you happen to be going about your day i think it's the second i think i obsess quite a lot about leaves i find <laughs> like i have these are like slices of oranges uh mm -hmm. there is like dry plants around my house i think i have an issue and i should talk with someone about it but i really like leaves <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, awesome. um, it comes natural. That's beautiful. Um, speaking of of natural and some of your drawings. Oh yeah, I have to know why are you a radish? <laughs> okay, <laughs> um, there is really no reason. Uh, I oh god, how did that come up? I think I had another character uh, that had leaves on its head because I mean. Um, and someone called it a radish, which in Italian is a funny word. I thought it was a cute comparison. It's mm -hmm. uh, rapanello. Uh, and, and I thought of making a radish version, which came to be my profile picture. At first it was just in like friends group chats. And then I slowly started making different outfits depending on the season. Like it was like, oh, it's Christmas. I'm going to give it some garlands. Um, and now it's a thing. And I don't think I can come out of it anymore. I but. love it so much. It's adorable. For those for those who, who aren't following what we're talking about, um, Julia's uh, uh, profile picture, her avatar um, on a lot of social media is this adorable little radish. Um, and and yeah, and, and Julia's always giving it, um, you know, fun outfits for different holidays and dressing it up. And so there's a, a bunch of different versions now and it's just delightful. Yeah, um, yeah it's just I love delightful. it. It's, it, it is so you. I mean, it's, I don't know 
<laughs> you stumbled into it, but I just like feel like it conveys your your essence. Um, and so I, I love it. I love it. I was just immediately drawn to it. And when I started realizing that it had a ton of different outfits, I was like, Liam, <laughs> I like called him over to my computer. I was like, look at this. This is so like wonderful and just heartwarming. <laughs> yeah, it's adorable. <laughs> yeah, I particularly, I'm just gonna give a shout out to my radish with a helmet. Cause I think I find that hilarious to this day. It's so silly, it had to happen. Someone I asked me have... like, how would you wear a helmet? Like on top of your leaves or on top of the radish body? I, was like, Gosh, I have to figure this out. Uh, and that's how that happened. And yeah, <laughs> it's my favorite. It's pretty good. I love it. <laughs> it's pretty good. I am, um, yeah, it's fun. Um, so, uh, going, going now to, um, back to, to, uh, full circle back to your professional work. Um, you know, we have seen a bit of, a bit of fan art in your, um, in your you know, social media and your portfolio. Um, and you've had a chance to work on, you know, big successful film. You've now had a chance to work on some Disney characters. Um, but if you could pick any one property character franchise to work on professionally, who would call you out of the blue today, um, what would you pick? I, I don't know. There is really so much stuff that I it would be so hard to pick something. Anything Lord of the Rings related, I am in. You have my body and soul. You can do whatever you want. Um, I I am, um, for some reason, very attached to the Notre Dame de Paris um, novel, the Victor Hugo one. Uh, there is a Disney movie, but there is also a bunch of other movies and there is musicals about it. Anything musical, I'm in. Um, so I would really love to be part of something like that, but I think one thing that I keep on saying I will do eventually, and I never start because I have a big issue with procrastination, uh, is to make something with the stories I grew up with, uh, which are not really famous. My mom used to come up with stories. She's actually a way better storyteller than I am. Um, and I had stories about the Alps. So I would really love to do something like that because I, I feel like they deserve, um, and instead like they deserve to be seen. But I don't know. See, there's too many things. I want to do too many things. I don't have time. Yeah. I think that would be wonderful. I was that... about to say. I feel like you and your mom need to get together and like write a children's book or something. That'd be great. I've been saying that for way too long. <laughs> you, I've already done one actually. Oh, uh, for really? my niece. Like a tiny story, I've already illustrated it. It's nowhere to be found, but. Uh, but it <laughs> yeah. is. Well, some someday, like 10 years from now, it'll be found and dusted off and. Um, <laughs> oh my God. That'd be great. Um, can, can I ask, can you describe, can you pick one of those stories and describe it for us? I'm curious. Um, um, I think there's this one, which is the, the ultimate one I want to make, which is a story about a witch that hates colors. She just hates all colors, she's a black witch, she's dressed in black, she lives in darkness, she doesn't want to see anything that is uh, vibrant and happy because she hates it. Um, and, and eventually out of revenge for the people outside of her hole that are out and about and being happy, she tries to paint the world black for them to like see the world as she does and take away the happiness. Uh, but she runs out of colors and like starts using a bit of gray and then blue and then dark green and then lighter green and eventually it's a rainbow it's it's a silly story but i really loved it i really loved colors back then um as you know i, I loved witches i was full into magic uh so it, it's something i would really like to do but it's really children's stories i was about to say that Sounds delightful. That needs to be a picture book, and when it exists, you need to tell us because I need a copy. Yeah, and we're <laughs> we'll be your I'll first try. Kickstarter backers too. When yeah, you... <laughs> I'll try. I'll try. So, um, so we always like to to kind of close our interviews, um, with a series of of fun questions from a Proust questionnaire. Um, ten questions. Um, some of them are silly. Mm -hmm. So, for the first one. Um, we're going to ask you, what sound or noise do you love? Um, okay. I'm going to be basic and say rain. Uh, rain on a tent 
when you are like camping in the woods and you feel rain on the tent is very nice. Uh, but I also really, really like bells, like tower bells. It sounds very religious, but I'm just from Italy, so they're everywhere. Uh, and it makes me feel at home and I travel a lot. So every time I hear them, it, I know I'm like in a safe place. I don't know, I, they're childhood memories. And that speaks to your love of Victor Hugo and in, in the Hunchback. Oh my God, yes. All the lines so well. Oh, no, yes. All comes full circle. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> um, what sound or noise do you hate? Ooh. Uh, I think mosquitoes have been mentioned already. Mm. And I love nature, but I don't, don't love mosquitoes. Uh, but I am fighting my personal battle with carpenters at the moment because i don't mm. know if this is a thing actually you tell me uh i don't know if this is a thing around the world but in italy or at least in my area it seems like carpenters really enjoy to drill like start drilling at 7 30 in the morning just for mm. half an hour and then they don't need to drill for the rest of the day so that is my pet peeve and the sound i like the least right now <laughs> yeah i, love it. I don't I know it's probably a thing around the world. I was going to say, we feel your pain. We have uh, our, we did a construction, a big construction project at our house for about a year. And uh, so our house was under construction for a year and we had carpenters in and out constantly. And yeah, it, they, they do love to make a racket at about seven in the morning. <laughs> I think they have an agreement. I think there is like a Facebook group where all car carpenters around the world discuss this thing. It's a thing. <laughs> I don't understand. 7.30, just wake everyone up. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And I am not a morning person, so I do not appreciate it. <laughs> I am, but still. Yeah. Slowly waking up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So what is your idea of happiness? Well, you guys ask difficult questions. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't want to go too deep. I guess balance whatever like in any aspect uh of work-life balance like being balanced in how you're feeling i don't know like i i'm thinking of happiness right now as a sunny day but like it's not too warm it's bad warm bad um but like i don't know one of those quiet afternoons where the sun is hitting but it's also a bit windy and like a sunday afternoon that's happiness. I love it. I do like that balance is a, is a wonderful answer because you can take that and apply it to so many different things. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I like that answer. Um, who is your favorite hero in fiction? Okay. Uh, I am a villain person, so oh. I don't know. Anti-hero then, maybe. No, no, but I think I can make it. Uh, I think the perfect hero, the one that I have nothing to say about, he's not even boring, he's just perfect, will be Aragorn from Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. That I'm fine with. Like, you have passed through the, oh, you're just a boring hero, you're perfection. You're allowed to exist in my world. Thank you for <laughs> your service. <laughs> I love it. Um, who's your favorite heroine in fiction? Um, I don't know. I'm, that's not an anti-hero, I guess. Uh, I'm gonna say Fleabag. I don't know if you guys have seen the British series. I definitely advise it. It's a, it's a live action series. We have not, but we will now. Yeah. Please do. It's amazing. Uh, <laughs> I rewatch it regularly. Uh, she's a mess, but it's fine to be a mess, I guess. So it's very much like, oh God, girl, you're a nightmare. But <laughs> it's relatable. We all are. That's fine. I would say feedback. She doesn't have another okay. name. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. It that's works. Okay. It We're going to go watch it today, yeah. probably now. Yeah. <laughs> please, please do. Um, what talent would you like to have? Languages. I would like to learn languages faster. Uh, I think, because I travel a lot and I feel like it's a good way of knowing the place where you are better, mm -hmm. like being able to understand the locals. I would love to speak more languages. 
That's a great answer. Do, do you speak, I have to ask, do you speak anything else besides English and Italian? Uh, I speak a bit of Spanish. I, I wouldn't say it's fluent, but I can kind of figure it. I live there. It's enough for me to survive. Uh, and a tiny bit of French. That's awesome. Because your English is brilliant. Yeah. Um, Thank you. <laughs> and what, so what, um, a follow on question to this, this is not officially in the questionnaire, but what one language, like what is the language that you would like to learn the most? No, that's not a question you ask. <laughs> no, <laughs> what are you doing? I don't know. I don't know. Any, Just any all of them. Uh, yes, all of them. <laughs> Okay. Something that is not a European language maybe would be the most useful. Mm -hmm. I think I can survive in Europe, but outside I know nothing. So something else. Like ma Mandarin, maybe. Like that's, yeah. I feel like a useful language to have. Why when you not? Travel to Asia. Yeah. yeah. So uh, what is your most treasured possession? My Cintiq. I am boring. My drawing tablet, I'm sorry. Uh, or my art books, I guess, those as well. They have mm -hmm. been following me for years, so, but yeah, you, definitely. You won't be surprised, the, the tablet is a very common answer. Yes, um, <laughs> <laughs> in our interviews. I so. can't imagine. <laughs> I guess that's what we get when we interview a bunch of artists. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I don't um, know, have art books being mentioned? Art books, let's say art books. That's going to be my official <laughs> language. Art books is a good one. There we go. Um, what are your favorite names? Um, that's so difficult because I've been obsessed with names since I can remember for whatever reason. Not even the, the meaning, I just like the sounds, like the fact that we pick a sound for a person and that's it. Um, I am very much into Irish names in general. Uh, but I don't know, I can't, uh, there's so many. I, I would say Sirsha. Sirsha is an Irish name for a girl. I really, really mm -hmm. love it, so. We do too. Yeah. <laughs> we do too. It's a delightful name. Um, oh, I think this is you. Oh, um, <laughs> what is your motto? I'm sorry. I forget things too fast. I keep on finding like good sentences that I'm like, oh, this, will be my life motto, but I, like 10 minutes after I don't remember it anymore. So I don't know, I can say I have one. Be kind, that's good enough. That's a good one. That is a good one. Um, final question. What is one question we didn't ask you that you wish we would have? I don't know. I'm a pretty boring person. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how stressed was I for this interview? A lot. That's my answer. <laughs> how stressed were you for this interview? <laughs> so much. Yeah, for yeah, I have to say, for, for anybody, you know, for anybody watching, you know, we, we also get stressed for these interviews. Yes. So it is mutual. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But it's been Killing so everything. fun, and uh, and we, despite the nerves, uh, we really, really, really appreciate you talking with us. Um, Thank you. You Same. know, as as we mentioned, um, you know, your cards have become, you know, favorites, uh, and you have done so many in the first set now that that everybody, I think, who's following Orkana has at least one that they're that they're really passionate about, if not all of them. So, um, we're big believers in um, appreciating the art by getting to know the artists behind them. And we think that makes the art just that much better. And now, you know, anybody watching this interview, when they when they see a new card revealed and it's one of yours, um, or open a pack of cards and get one of your cards, I think it'll mean that much more because they've gotten to know you um, a little bit through, uh, through, well, through this interview, hopefully. So we appreciate you taking the time. Same, thank you so much, really, for having me. Thank you. Yeah, it's been delightful. Well, it was so lovely to meet you. We hope you have a great rest of your day. You too. And let's talk again soon. <laughs> Bye. Yeah.